What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh, yeah, guys. So, last episode, we set up all of these hives over here. Yeah, and uh, we put a node up there to get empowered. Look at the size of the aura around this node, guys. It is crazy big. This thing has gathered so many aspects in it overnight. <laughs> it is crazy. Let's check this out. So, uh, yeah, we have roughly 1300 of each aspect in there plus all of these other like non-base aspects those are combinations of either the base aspects or combinations of those combinations etc etc uh my understanding is when you have a node that has like all of these other crazy aspects in there let's look at it from this angle because we can see all the little icons uh yeah when you have like all of those other crazy aspects in there those get broken down Right, so if you have one that's built off another aspect, that's built off another aspect, that's built off another one, yeah, you have like a big long chain to get to that particular one. Yeah, it breaks down and you get, you know, a base aspect for each one of those. Like it can get pretty crazy. So some of those are really good. Some of those are all right. But basically all of the ones that are not the base aspect will be broken down into base aspects and they'll add to that total so even though we only have like about 13, 1400 of each base aspect, it's actually more thanks to all those other ones. Cool. So I am interested in seeing what we can do with this node. Now, uh, one thing that was brought to my attention is that these nodes, while they are really good, this particular one is a normal node, you can have bright nodes or the pale nodes. The pale nodes, when you turn into an energized node, takes a hit on how much CV it can produce. It's like 50% less. The bright nodes are 50% more than the normal nodes. And this is just a normal with all the stuff in there. So I'm kind of curious to see if we can change this into a bright node and even make our output of the CV that much more. Now remember, this is just one day. We could leave this going for a week or something, get a ridiculous amount of aspects in there, but I really don't think that's necessary. Uh, so what I want to do, I want to break this thing. Yeah, like, has the glowing effect in the inventory, too. That's kind of cool. Uh, I want to break this thing, and I want to see if we can turn this into a bright node. Now, last episode, we bred to the empowering bee. But if you take this empowering bee and... I can't remember what the other one was. Anyway, we can get to the nexus. Uh, yeah. The rejuvenating bee and the empowering bee, those two breed together into the nexus one. And this bee has a special effect where it can improve node statuses. It's called magnification. And it can turn our normal node into a bright node. Or it can turn like a fading node into a pale or a pale into our normal. Yeah, this one's still blinky. It hasn't gone away. I did try depowering it though. I removed the redstone. And converted this back into our normal node. So it lost a little bit of the aspects. But I was just kind of playing around with this thing. Uh, but yeah, let's take this node. Our normal node. Get on my hotbar. Go on. Let's place this right here. Now, I set up more hives over here. I haven't turned these on yet. But I do have the Nexus bees in here. I have them all with the same traits. And yeah, it's all set up. So all I should have to do. Main base power. We will turn this on. Yeah, all of these will fill up with power. They will start breeding. Cool. Yeah, automation upgrades in there. Again, these aren't going to be produ producing any drones or anything. They will make combs and things like that. And we have item ducts underneath that are sucking that stuff out. But yeah, I'm very interested in seeing if we can get this node uh, into a bright node. So what was that item? Uh, thermometer. That's what we're looking for. This thing. Does it? Okay, I can't see if this is a bright node or not. I don't know if there's a way that we can see on this tooltip since the tooltip is kind of crazy right now. I can't see where it says normal or anything like that. I guess we'd have to break it, put it in our inventory. Oh, look at that. It says normal comma bright right now. I haven't done anything else at the very top of the tooltip. Huh, so that was really fast. So I'm curious, uh, the other nodes that we have... Yeah, these are all pale. Let's pick one of these up. Actually, let's take all of these. So I'm curious how fast this works. If this happens really fast, that'll be pretty awesome. So this one is also a pale, and this one's also a pale. So let's take those right there, and we'll just see how long it takes before those turn into the not pale version. 
yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be that fast. But then again, I wasn't expecting these nodes to gain all of these other crazy aspects that fast either. I'm going to break one. Wow, that, wait. Does it really just turn into a bright node, like, immediately? Because that was pale, right? Yeah, it just almost immediately turns these into a bright node. Okay, I was expecting to have to let these things sit for like an hour or maybe overnight or something. That's gotta be some kind of mistake in the uh, the Magic Bees code. They can't possibly make it so that's an instant <laughs> from pale to bright. I don't know. That's my thought on it anyway. I don't know anything about how the mod makers decide what's right and what's wrong. But anyway, we do have a bright node with all of these crazy aspects. Let us go ahead. We will un redstone power our node transducer. That's going to turn this node from an energized node back into a regular one. And once it's in a regular node state, we can go ahead and break this thing. But you do not want to break this node, the node stabilizer, or the node transducer while this thing is energized. Otherwise, it makes a pretty big explosion. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I was, like I said, I played around with this stuff a little bit in creative before just to make sure I knew what I was doing, sort of, kind of, maybe. Yeah, don't break this thing while it's still an energized node. Uh, it takes, a, I don't know, about a minute or two for this thing to convert back into our normal one. Let's wait for that to happen. We will swap that out with this crazy node, and we'll see how much CV we can make with this one. All right, well, that node unenergized pretty quickly. It was faster than I thought it was going to be. Look at the aura around this node, though. That is a little crazy. Like, it extends all the way out over here. <laughs> so, yeah, this is a bright node with all these aspects in there. Let's go ahead and tap it with the wand. Okay. So, now it is a stabilized node with all these aspects. And then we can put this block of redstone on the node transducer up here to start converting this into an energized node. Yeah, and this is gonna suck out all of the different aspects and add it to the CV total. It looks like this is gonna take a minute because it's slowly draining each one of those and there's a lot of aspects in here for it to drain out. Okay, so this is another thing. We're just gonna sit here and wait for this to happen. We'll be back, guys. All right, guys, well, this converted into the CV node, so we are now powering yeah, our uh, V relay right here off of this guy, which is bright. And yeah, we got a decent amount of aspects in there. It looks like it's got about 40 of each one. I think previously we only had about five or six of each different one in there. So yeah, this is going to be much better. So let's test this out. I just made myself a gold band and gray wood wand. I made this just because it has no capacity in there. I want to see how fast this is going to recharge. So let's stick this right here. And yeah, check that out. That's filling up pretty quickly. We should be able to do a lot of arcane crafting or whatever. And then once our wand <laughs> loses all of its charge, yeah, it just takes a few moments and it fills right back up. No more warping to the mob farm. That's awesome. Yeah, we had this set up last time, but it was going pretty slow. It was still kind of awesome. This is way better. Now, this was only a node that was set up to go overnight. Yeah, we could set another one here. In fact, I put these other <laughs> three nodes over here. Yeah, I set these up so we can just go ahead and fill these all up with stuff. Um, I did take a look at the Magic Bees code. It was posted in the comments in the last episode. And just looking at it, I don't think, um, yeah, the chance of these gaining any aspects is decreased if there's more in range. I think it checks each and every one and each has its own chance of gaining aspects. So, yeah, I said last episode having two of these here, maybe one would only get half the amount. No, I don't think that's the case, but I don't know 100%. Uh, these are filling up decently quickly. I think we're going to leave these here, and we'll just see how big we can get them. We I don't know if we need more of these <laughs> energized aura nodes or not, but, yeah, we might as well do that since we have bright nodes and we have the ability to fill them up full of stuff. Why not do it? Cool. So let's go ahead and move on to something else, guys. All right, guys, so I was just looking through the Thaumonomicon here, and we are on the Thaumic Tinkering tab. Now, I know that the Iker Cloth stuff is supposed to be pretty good, so I was just looking at this. Yeah, uh, the cowl, the headpiece, gives us a V discount of 4%, which isn't that great considering the goggles gives us 5 but I think there might be some kind of a set bonus. I haven't really read through everything here. 
Anyway, uh, the robes give us four, the leggings give us four, and the boots give us three percent. This is all better, except for that headpiece. Uh, this is all better than what we are currently using. Uh, we do need the ichor cloth stuff, which is that enchanted fabric with some of this ichor and then some diamonds. And you make this in the infusion crafting. Yeah, we need ender shard, diamond, nether shard, and eye of ender. It has an instability of high and it requires a bunch of these different aspects. So ender shard and nether shard. <laughs> Let's see. Shard, ender, nether. Oh, we do have them. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if we did or did not. And then we also need, what was another star? Okay, let's get like four of those. Uh, yeah, I gotta go back into the book because I don't have this thing. Yeah, another star, diamond, eye of ender. Okay, so this should not be that bad. So we need to make sure we have the Humanus, the Lux, and the Spiritus in our system. Humanus, yeah, we have that. Spiritus, we have it. And then Lux was the other one. We have a little bit of Lux. I think that's going to be enough for our four crafts. Yeah, we can just melt down some um, torches or whatever, I guess. Or glowstone maybe might have Lux. I can't remember. So anyway, we should have all of this stuff. Let me grab Eye of Ender. We needed four of these. And I still can't remember what that last item was. Diamond. Okay, got it. Diamond. Cool. Uh, yeah, and then the... The uh, nether star is what goes in the very center of this. We'll go ahead and put all these things around. So there's a diamond, an eye of ender, uh, a shard, and the other shard. Cool. And finally, a nether star. Right, so now we just need to click it with the wand. Get clicked. All right, so yeah, we'll go ahead and do some fusion crafting. I need to do this like three or four times. Let me do this. We will start making all of that different things that we need for our Iker cloth, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I went ahead and made the Ikor, and then we have some enchanted fabric here in the diamonds. So with all of our different discounts here, our wand right here has a 79% average V discount cost. Actually, that might be adding in all of this other stuff that we have. But anyway, with all of our Thaumaturge stuff on and our Silverwood wand, yeah, we are able to craft all this stuff. Uh, this is like, a, normally this craft I think is 125 of each of the aspects. Yeah, that's what it says right here. So yeah, we're definitely able to craft this now. And the game crashed as soon as I tried pulling out the Ichor Cloth. That is kind of frustrating. Especially since it takes about three years for the client to load back up. But what can you do? What can you do? Anyway, we were able to make our first three of these things. And I saw there was the Eker Cloth Strapped Silverwood Wand Core. This looks pretty awesome. So we need some of the Eker, some of the Eker Cloth, some Salus Mundus, Gas Tear, and then a Silverwood Rod. Right. And then uh, 100 Magic, 32 Lux, and 32 Instrumentium. Or Instrumentum. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and craft this up. Very high instability. Again, we have all those skulls underneath. Shouldn't make any difference at all. Let me go ahead and get this together, and we will see if we can make one of these real quick. Yeah, I gotta make another one of these silverwood rods. Not a big deal. Yeah, let me do this. We'll be back, guys. All right, so everything should be ready to go for this very high instability infusion crafting. I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up. We should have all of the aspects in the system. I'm pretty sure there wasn't anything super special there. Yeah, I just need 100 of the magic, 32 lux, 32 instrumentum, and then we have the silverwood wand core, which I just crafted right here in the center pedestal. Yeah, a little piece of ichor, some ichor cloth on the two sides over here, some salus mundus, and a gas tier. Cool. So this is going to take a minute. There's a lot of stuff for it to suck into the crafting for all these aspects. Let's wait for this to happen, and we'll be back. Very high instability. Ha! <laughs> Not so much. So we're all good here. There's our Iker cloth strapped uh, silverwood wand core. Now I gotta figure out what we're gonna use for the wand caps. I know, well, at least I'm pretty sure the Thomic Tinkerer has some wand caps. Let's take a look real quick. Uh, no, those are wand focuses or foci. Does it have wand caps? Maybe it doesn't. Now the question is, what should we use for wand caps? These are more wand foci. Yeah, there's our silverwood wand core that we had unlocked from previous. 
This is the armor stuff that we have. I guess we can upgrade our different stuff. I still have to do the research on those. I have not done that yet. Ah, oh, here we go. Aquarium wand caps. These are probably the ones we want. So charged thomium caps. Oh, how do we make the aquarium? A hundred of each aspect. Oh, this is getting kind of expensive. Okay. Uh, yeah, we should be able to do this though. It's just going to require some more of this stuff, the ichor, to be made. We just need more nether stars. That is not difficult. It is a hundred of each of these, so this should probably be one of the top tiers, if not the top tier uh, wand when we are all done with it. Okay, so let me get some more uh, crafting done here. Yeah, this is getting more in depth than I thought we were going to be uh, right from the start. But yeah, let me go and get some more stuff done. We will start looking at making the ichor cloth clothing and all of this stuff. And this rod, or I guess the new wand. Yeah, let me do this. We'll be back. All right, guys, so we got everything together now. There's our aquarium caps, our aquarium strapped silverwood wand core, and the other aquarium cap. Yeah, that's going to make an aquarium adorned acre cloth strapped silverwood wand <laughs> that has a capacity of a thousand. So this one has a capacity of a hundred. This one's 10 times better. Let's make it awesome. So we have really upgraded our wand now. Yeah, and this thing is going to take a minute to fill all the way up. But now that we have this, we won't have to really worry about V discounts as much. I mean, it still is something we probably should worry about. But anyway, uh, we still have all this Iker cloth stuff to make. I'm going to go ahead and start making this stuff. Yeah, it takes 75 of each one of these aspects. Uh, yeah, anyway, let me go ahead and start making this stuff up and we will be back. Yeah, so we got all that armor crafted up. I'm basically Harry Potter now with my wand and my robes and all of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, so we got quite the discount with all of these different pieces on here. We got 5, 4, 4, and 3%. And then the wand itself already has a discount. So with all the robes on and the wand itself, we have a 53% average V cost, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, if we take this stuff off, we can see the wand has a 70% by default. So yeah, the uh, the robes definitely add in a decent amount to that V cost. Awesome. So I am probably not going to be using the uh, the terminal thingy anymore <laughs> for swapping armor. It seems like placing the armor in here crashes me every once in a while. Swapping the armor crashes me every once in a while. Even crafting something in here crashes me every once in a while. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's just. It's just a little frustrating. Anyway, we'll keep our wand here. That hasn't crashed me at all by leaving that there. Uh, the next thing that I want to work on, though, uh, I think we're going to stop with the Thomcraft for today. We've messed around with this stuff quite a lot. Oh, my goodness. That, that node just is super big right there. And these other ones right here are starting to get pretty big themselves, too. Yeah, look at that. We're already at, like, 300 in each one of those. That's pretty awesome. So, anyway, yeah, we're going to leave the Thomcraft stuff behind for now. Um... Actually, I did turn back on the wisp spawner, so we are now, like, getting a lot of this stuff in the system. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, uh, what I want to work on is a little bit of the Batania stuff. So we've been talking about opening up a portal to Alfheim or whatever for, like, the last 275 episodes thereabouts. Uh, let's go ahead and actually try and get to that today. So the portal to Alfheim, right? So it says... It's said that once elves used to share a world with us Minecrafters due to unknown events, they would have been banished back to their own world, Alfheim. Experimentation has been done in an attempt to bridge the gap between the two worlds and means of creating a portal that does just that have been devised. Cool. So we are going to need eight living wood blocks, three glimmer glimmering living wood blocks. I don't know what that is. Uh, one elven gateway core, mat, two mana pools, and two nature pylons. I think we've already made these, so we know about those. Uh, all right, so an elven gateway core, we need a primal charm. Oh, okay, so maybe we aren't going to leave the Thomcraft stuff behind just for now. Uh, we need soul of the world, a magician's blood orb. We already have one of these. And ender do, I believe we have some of that stuff. Okay, so soul of the world and... Primal Charm. Let's take a look at this. Okay. So, Soul of the World. We need an Attuned Stone, Redstone Soup, Potion of Regeneration, Mandrake, Rowan Sapling, and a Notch Golden Apple. So, the Redstone Soup, we have to put a Tongue of Dog. <laughs> we have about a billion of these from our gold farm long, long ago. 
Uh, Belladonna Flower, Drop of Luck. I think that might be new. Woolabat, Mandrake, and a piece of redstone. So the Drop of Luck, the <laughs> Mutandus Extremus. I'm trying to say that right. I think I was saying it wrong for the last few episodes. I believe it's Mutandus. Anyway, uh, Refined Evil. I don't know what this is. Tear of the Goddess. I think we might have some of those. Nether Wart and more Mandrake. So Refined Evil. We need Diamond Vapor and a Gas Tear. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, yeah, we can go ahead and do that. I'll probably make up a few of those. And the Diamond Vapor was Diamond plus Oil of Vitriol. And the Vitriol was Foul Fume plus Quick Lime. And the Quick Lime was just this Wood Ash. Okay, so yeah, we can do that. That's not a big deal. We saw how to make this last time. Tear the Goddess. Oh, you know what? Maybe we haven't made this. So Breath of the Goddess, which is from Birch Saplings. Yeah. Uh, that plus Lapis. All right, so we'll get a slime ball. I guess that's another way to get slime balls in this mod pack. That's kind of cool. Cool. Um, so drop a lock. So the redstone soup isn't that bad. It's just kind of involved. And then we need... Oh, I guess that's that's pretty much it. All right, soul of the world. And then the primal charm. This is demonic slates. Ooh. So we need a tier four altar before we can do the primal charm and before we can open up the portal to Alfheim, I see. So we need to upgrade our portal. Hmm, I'm not sure which one we should do first. Maybe maybe we should jump into blood magic because that seems like that's gonna be more involved. Uh, yeah, so we already have everything set up for the tier four except for these blocks right here, yeah. So the altar by itself is tier one. The eight around it makes it the tier two. This ring right here makes it the tier three with the glowstone. And this ring down here will make it tier four, but these redstone blocks need to be bloodstone blocks, I do believe. Okay, so to upgrade to bloodstone, we need ritual stones and weak blood shard. Now, I thought I saw before in an earlier version of this mod pack that you could get weak blood shards from bees. And I went back and I looked now, I think maybe something was changed, but I can't find bees that produce these weak blood shards anymore. I was going to set those up and just get a ridiculous amount that way, but I don't think we can do that. Hmm. So anyway, uh, once we get it, we can duplicate them. So it won't be like ridiculously difficult. But in order to get this, I think we have to make some kind of a sword, a special sword from Blood Magic and kill a monster with it. It's been a little bit of time since I've done that. I wasn't expecting to do this right now. Let me take a moment, uh, figure out what we need to do, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so I just refreshed my memory on how we can get the weak blood shards. Yes, we need to make ourselves a bound blade, and the mob has to be hit at least once with the bound bleed to cause a little bit of a weakness effect and then it has to be killed by the bound bleed or some other means as long as it has that weakness effect. So we can get that by using a binding ritual with a sword of the zephyr and the sword of the zephyr we are currently crafting up is just a couple of air shards, a thomium sword, gray wood log, diamond. Yeah, we have some thomium swords in our system but they have zero out of one durability which means they break instantly. I tried doing the recipe with that, it did not work. Uh, yeah, so anyway, I am. <laughs> I just made myself a Thaumium Sword. Pretty inexpensive at this point. Yep, and we are crafting that up. Oh, I guess it finished, that was a pretty quick recipe. Okay, so now we have a Sword of the Zephyr. Right, and we have to do the Binding Ritual. So that means we have to get into Blood Magic's Binding stuff. Uh, so we need a ritual stone and the master ritual stone. Okay, so which one of these we need a master magicians? Okay, good. We have the magicians, so obsidian, ritual stones, and the ritual stones are made from reinforced slate, obsidian, and then, of course, one of our orbs, probably the blue one that we already have, maybe. Is he going to go through it? <laughs> yeah, magician's blood orb, that's what it was. Cool, so we can do that. So we just need reinforced slates. Now, a lot of the arcane stone, uh, I put through the system already, so we have a lot of blank slates. Yeah, I just set this up to be kind of automatic. Uh, so I need to let these things go through once again to turn into those reinforced slates. We're going to need a bunch of those to make these ritual stones. 
Okay, so let me go ahead. I'm gonna make one. I'll set a pattern on this thing. So it'll only pull out the um, the reinforced ones. Yep. Let me get some stuff done, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys. So I went ahead and I crafted up four stacks of these reinforced slates. And while that was cooking, I decided to melt down some stuff here, make some gypsum. Yeah. So we've got some of this going. Uh, I made two stacks of the ritual stones and then I made three master ritual stones. So this will allow us to have up to three different rituals going. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we have some of these reinforced slates left over. Cool. So the next thing we really need to do at this point is to make one of these ritual diviners. Now, this has been changed for expert mode. We need mana diamonds in this recipe. We need this ritual chalk, which requires this gypsum, which is why I decided to go do that. Uh, let's see. Can we make that right now? Yes. Okay, so we have the ritual chalk. Uh, we need the mana diamonds and then we also need these elemental inscription tools. Mm hmm. Now each one of these, we have to use the runes from Batania. So the rune of air to make the air one, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, rune of fire to make the fire tool. So basically we need each one of the runes from Batania. I don't remember. Oh, we do. We have each of these. <laughs> we have at least one of each of these, which is pretty cool. And air. Okay, so all we have to do is just throw those over here in our blood altar. I need to turn this thing off, I do believe. All right, so it's only going to cost a 1000 per, so we should be able to do that, no problem. Yeah, it only takes just a split second here. Well, I guess a couple of seconds anyway to make one of those. Cool, there's another one. Get our fire, and then we'll get our air here in just a second. Or I guess earth. Cool. All right. So we got all those. So now we should be able to craft all of this stuff up into the ritual diviner. There we go. Now there's also an upgraded version of this one. Uh, this one. Yeah, we have to make these dusk runes and then, uh, I guess we need demonic slate. So we need a tier four, a tier four altar before we can get to that point. But yeah, this will be able to place the dusk runes. And then I guess there is one final one that will allow it to place the dusk and dawn runes. So what do we need for this glowstone and a tier six? Okay, so we can't do that for quite some time and also needs ethereal slates, which is the demonic slate through a tier five. Anyway, I think we are good for now. So we need to do the ritual of binding. So I believe we shift right click on this until we get the ritual of binding. There it is. So we'll place down a master ritual stone. Yeah, this is why I said I didn't want to put that wall because I didn't know how much room blood magic was going to need. So we'll put the ritual stone here. We'll do the ritual binding. All you got, I guess you just click it once and it places the stone. You don't have to keep clicking now. Cool. So there's all, <laughs> there's all the stuff that we need. Uh, so I'm trying to remember how this works. It's been a minute since I've done this. I know we put the sword of the Zephyr on there. I think we need some kind of a weak binding thing. So one of these. Weak activation crystal. This is what we need. Okay, so a tier three altar, 10,000 LP. So a lava crystal in the blood altar. Oh, okay. Empty core, which is simple catalyst and Batania stuff. You know what? We have all of this. Let's get some crafting done. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize all of these were going to be changed like this. All right. So there's our empty core and then three buckets of lava warded glass. All right. So we just need the lava. All right. So we'll get three buckets. Let's head over to our our home warp and lava is selected. There's three buckets. Is that the last of the lava I had in here? I think it was. Oh no. Okay. Well, I'll worry about that later. I do have a bedrockium drum full of stuff. All right. So back to blood magic. All right. So lava. Lava and lava. There's our lava crystal. And then what was it? We just put that into the blood altar. Yeah, into the tier three. It's gonna take ten thousand LP, so a full blood altar's worth. Uh so that's gonna take a minute to drain out, I expect. How fast does this go? Oh, you know what? I might have to remove some of these speed runes. Oh man. <laughs> okay, uh 
Or actually, no, I guess that finished up real quick. Yeah, the faster, or I guess the higher the tier, the faster things process. So speed runes and things like that really make them go faster. But I guess that was pretty quick. Okay, so we have this. Now, I think we have to put the sword. Oh, I got my magnet on. I think we drop the sword on there and then we click it with this thing. You feel a pull, but you are too weak to push any further. Do I have to link this to myself somehow? Aha, that's what I did wrong. Okay, so we're getting lightning inside. Hopefully that's not messing anything up up above. Yeah, there's our bound sword. Awesome. And that thing goes away, so we're no longer drawing any power from our network. Cool. All right, so now we need to go find ourselves a mob and just smack a few of them with the sword. Probably the best place to do this would be the end with the Enderman. I'm going to just assume this is probably our best bet for this. This is like the only place we have set up where we should be able to do this pretty easily. Uh, no, weather should be all the way off. We'll turn hostile creatures all the way down. Yeah, let's go over here and see if we can smack a few of these Endermen. Yeah, you gotta shift right click. This is the off state. This is the on state. When it's in the on state, it will be drawing stuff from your LP network. Let's just grab a couple Endermen. We don't want too many. All right, so yeah, attacking them gives them the weak, the weakness effect. And then when they die with that weakness effect, they have a chance. I don't think it's 100%, but they have a chance to drop these. Now that we have these, we can go ahead and duplicate these. So the use is... Uh, where was the... Maybe it doesn't show here. I know I saw that earlier. Oh, here it is. Yeah, so we need an imbued slate plus one of those, and we get five. Cool. So we can also use this with some ritual stones to get the large bloodstone bricks. We should probably do this real quick. All right, let's go back to the base. We'll turn the sword off. Let's go home. All right, so four ritual stones. And one of these. I think I need the better blood orb. Let's put that one in there. There we go. Now we're doing it. Cool. And that should give us the eight bloodstone bricks. And if we go back to blood magic, we can go ahead and replace these. Let me turn my magnet back on. All right. So we'll go and replace those with the large bloodstone bricks. And that should make this now a tier four altar since we already had all of those Yeah, all of these runes down here, the rune of dislocation. So we can verify by taking the division of sigil and clicking on here. Alt oh, you know what? There's a couple missing blocks back here, isn't there? Okay. Uh, there's a rune of dislocation. And I guess we'll just put a blood rune in here for now. Yeah, that should make it a tier four. There we go. Okay, so we got the full tier four set up, so we should be able to put the the eye in there and make the next blood orb and continue on with our blood magic stuff. Yeah, even the magic side of this mod pack has a rabbit hole. <laughs> but yeah, we're making progress now. We are definitely making progress. We only have to go through all these steps once, and once we get to that point, we can set up a second blood altar should we choose to uh, with all of these different runes and everything. But yeah, guys, I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on these other nudes over here, make sure they don't go too bonkers. But yeah, the fact that we got them from the pale to the bright almost instantly, and the fact that all three of these, yeah, all three of these are gaining aspects like crazy. This is so good. Our energized CV node over here, this is doing really well as well. Uh, I would like to see if we can make a bigger one. I don't know if we need more than one or if we need a bigger one, but I would like to see if we can do it. But yeah, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.